Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, the 27th of January, 2023, uh, day before Winterfield Day 2023. I uh, wanted to kind of go through and show you how to set up a couple of programs for Winterfield Day. Uh, JS8 Call and VAR AC. Uh, JS8 Call has been in Winterfield Day since like 2019. So there's probably a lot of videos out there about it, but most of them are like 30 minutes long and they take their time getting to wherever they get need to get. VAR AC was just added this year, I believe. Uh, it's fairly new. Not a whole lot of people are using it. So uh, I will start with JS8 Call. Uh, I will show you the configuration settings, but I won't actually use it because obviously we're not doing a fill day yet. Okay. So you go into your settings. Uh, the first thing is going to be in your station. You'll have your call sign. You'll have your grid. Uh, you can add this group right here at WFD. That way you can specify which ones you want to see. Um, so what it does is when people do the WFD group, it will show those to you. Uh, you can also do SNR requests to that group. That way you can find out who is seeing you and who isn't. So. You know, if nobody's seeing you, you know, you're not going to get anywhere with, with this. Um, down here, normally it says CQ, 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 my call or my grid. Uh, you will change it to winter field day or WFD or field day or FD or whatever appropriately. Uh, whatever is normally in here, you can put in, I have. QSL, please copy one home Iowa. You can put an I for indoor. You can put an O for outdoor. New to 2023, you also have M for mobile. You'll have to look in the rules to figure out which one is appropriate for you. Uh, the station information and station status doesn't really matter because you're not going to send that information out. All you care about right now is Hello and reply and be done. Um, under behavior, I wouldn't mess with any of that unless you have a reason to. Under your networking and auto reply, you might want to turn off the heartbeat transmissions. That was the recommendation I saw Googling all this because the band is going to be busy. So you may want to turn the heartbeats off. Your mileage may vary on that. For the radio, you're going to set it up appropriately. Um, I am not going to go through the whole test of the CAT and PTT. Uh, this is what I found works for my radio. Again, your mileage will vary. Uh, same thing with CAT control. For audio, you'll set these up appropriately for whatever your sound card is. Your reporting tab, um, these two probably won't do anything because for winter fill day, you're not supposed to have network, internet access. Some people have it, some don't. Uh, we will be trying to do it through an art and mesh. So they may or may not work. Um, down here, if you're using N3 FJP logger, you're going to check this. You're going to tell it to look wherever the server is, and then you're going to have it look at the appropriate port. Uh, if you are networking computers, you will still use local host because your local, the logger on your computer will handle passing it through the network to the server. Uh, for N1MM logger, you'll do the same thing. You'll enable it. You'll set the appropriate port and IP address, more than likely local host. You can run both. I don't know why you would, but you can. Uh, 
If you're using ham radio deluxe, log for old man, uh, CQR log or whatever, they will have the information to put in here and you'll fill it out with the appropriate IP address and port, most likely local host, but the port number will change. Um, the difference between TCP and UDP is whether or not it's formal or informal. Uh, UDP, it just broadcasts out the information and doesn't care if the logger gets it or not. TCP, there's an actual formal process to ensure that it gets it. The logging program will tell you which one you're using. Uh, frequencies. Don't mess with it unless you have to. Saved messages. You can add saved messages if you want. Um, you don't have to. Notifications. You can enable it if you want to. Uh, the UI. You can set up your color scheme how you want. If you use N3FJP, I know with FT8, it will actually alter the color scheme if you tell it to. I don't know if it works with JS8 call. I haven't tried it. So once you have it all set up, then you will click OK. You'll use CQ to get the CQ message out. You'll pick whichever one replies to you, and you'll do the reply and then you'll go from there. You may have to type your 73 here, or you can set it up somewhere else. You can set it up under station, under one of these if you want. So uh, that's up to you. So that is how you set up this program. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the noise in the background. I have my furnace was going. So uh, VAR AC. So when you run VAR AC, the first thing that's going to open up is your VAR window. And then VAR AC will open up as well. Uh, so VAR AC, you're going to go into settings. Uh, you, first place you'll want to go is my information, set up your call sign, set up whatever information like your locator and that kind of thing. And then save and exit. They have down here. It tells you what to put in your your macros for each one. Then you're going to go into uh, rig control. And you're going to set this up appropriately. So the oddball thing is for JS8 call, I had to have these set to low. In here, it worked on high. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to switch them around to see if they work because they work. So you'll set all this up. Uh, for your logger, you can actually click on, let's see, where is it now? You can click the drop down here, and it will show you all the loggers that it works with. And it will tell you whether it's UDP or TCP, and it will set the port appropriately for you. Uh, you the sub mode, leave it as far HF unless you're doing FM. Uh, you don't really have any options. So, with VAR AC, if you do not have the registered copy of VAR, you will be limited to the lower speed. If you do have it, you'll have the higher speed. Um, You'll have to check with that program to find out the differences. I think it's like 1,200 and 2,300, but I'm not going to quote that. Um, so you'll set your modem type over here. Um, you'll set all this up. Um, I actually had to go through and find a different directory for all this stuff because those didn't exist. And I wasn't going to mess with them. You can enable a DX cluster, but if you don't have internet, it shouldn't do anything. Uh, you can leave your beacons on. So you save and exit, and then you will use the program. Um, I'm not familiar with VAR AC. I will tell you that right now. I can tell you how to set up your canned messages and that kind of thing. 
but as far as actually doing it, that's going to be another video somewhere else. If you find a video that shows you how to use VAR AC, then switching it for winter field day will just be a matter of choosing canned messages as opposed to whatever they tell you to use. So, uh, going into that, canned predefined messages. I've already set this up. These first ones, the first five, are there by default. I left them alone because why why mess with them if they work? Okay. I added one down here. It says CQ, WFD, my call, my location. Um, called it WFD1. Then I also put in the please QSL, please copy 1H in the alpha. Again, you can say 1I, 1H, 1I, 1O, 1M, depending on what you're going, running as. Uh, obviously, if you have five transmitters, it's 5I, 5H, 5O, 5M. If you're running a huge station with 23, then you probably already know how to do this. So, um, so you type it out, you set it up. For my 73, I'm just going to use this one. I mean, it's there, it works, I'm not worrying about it. Okay. So for VARA, you're going to come up here, you're going to go to sound card, and you're going to choose your sound card appropriately. Uh, you can use the tune to set your ALC and all that. I don't, I haven't done it. Um, so on my radio, it's a, about a five step process. I have to go to the menu, set it, and do all that. I'm not going to. So. But you'll set this up appropriately, you'll tune it, you'll get your, your drive down so your ALC is low to about a third to half. Uh, for whatever reason, mine doesn't work very well unless I have it at full. So, and I don't have the lamp and amp, so it doesn't matter. Um, everything is done in here. This window here is just going to show you like an X if you've got a good connection. It's going to show you like a pattern up in here. Uh, it's going to show you your bit rate for transmitting. It's going to show this for when you're actually transmitting in your ACK and NAC. And you're, you can see your noise levels and processor level and that kind of thing. So, um, but everything you're going to do is in here. Okay. So with that, that is how to get prepared for Winter Field Day. Um, I hope to see you on the air. We will be running as AC0EC, Alpha Charlie Zero Echo Charlie. That is our Muscatine Cedar County Aries call sign. So if you see me, go ahead and click on it and reply back. So thanks. Have a great day.